Instagram is dead. I won't be going back. I'm just so thrilled to be saying and sharing that I'm officially ending this toxic relationship that I have with Instagram. I don't be on Instagram anymore because I don't understand who here. Leave a comment if you understand the point of Instagram. Do you get it? Do you understand what we're all supposed to be doing there? I don't. I think this is the end of what we knew and we're entering a new era of Instagram and all social media. I believe that social media is headed in a direction that there is no coming back from and for multiple reasons this makes it hard to grow on Instagram. There's no stopping me now, I know my shots just sit down, money's all over me, I'm called to be rich and be free. Listen, I tried to tell y'all that Instagram was not Instagramming like it used to and that it was in fact the ghetto. But when I was saying that years ago, y'all was tussling with me in the comments telling me that I was wrong. Instagram is where it was and y'all continued to invest time, resources, and energy trying to grow your business, trying to grow your personal brands on Instagram. And I'm not mad at y'all. Oh, I see why people be deleting Instagram now. Is anyone else like terrified to post on Instagram anymore? Like I might just never post a picture ever again. It's just like awkward now. Now all of a sudden I am noticing an uptick in content creators and entrepreneurs who have been making content talking about the Instagram algorithm and how it sucks, how they have low engagement, they're not getting likes and comments, their reach is being limited, and even in their own user experience, instead of seeing the content that they want to see from family and friends or the pages and people they follow, they get all these random videos. And that is not a coincidence, okay? That is because the Instagram algorithm has changed and in this video I want to talk about the shift that I have been noticing when it comes to not only Instagram but most of the social media platforms and how the algorithms are kind of designed and then I want to talk about just in general why I quit Instagram over two years ago and what my life in business has been like since then spoiler alert it's still thriving okay um but first things first before I even get into this let's just take a trip down a memory lane and talk about the rise of Instagram the Instagram as we used to know it that we all love and this is the same gripe that I have with Facebook as well and when it comes to Instagram and Facebook, these are two platforms that for me personally, I have always used them most as apps and social media sites where I can connect with family, friends, colleagues, you know, people who I have meaningful relations and connections to in some way or another. Like even when I meet someone at a conference, typically we would connect on Instagram and we would follow each other, kind of keep up with people. Whenever I'm traveling, you know, I meet people, I would add them on Instagram and I could follow their travel stories and journey, even though we met in say Bali, now they're in Japan. I may be in Vietnam, we can still kind of like see what everyone is up to get inspiration and stay connected that way and so that's kind of what instagram used to be you could post pictures um you can kind of get inspiration whether like for me it was travel inspiration i will also get just like updates on some of my favorite brands my favorite tv shows um <laughs> like i used to be an avid married at first sight watcher I have not watched the last two seasons ever since little Chris was on there. I have not been invested because number one, they went from one hour episodes to two hour episodes. And I feel like they really capitalized on that. And it's like, y'all could have cut half of this stuff out. Like y'all are milking it at this point, trying to get all the ad dollars. But I ain't mad at you from a business standpoint, but as a watcher, I don't got time for it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked, but actually... We're going to talk more about ads because I think that's a big part of the problem when it comes to why Instagram is the way that it is right now. But back to just kind of like what Instagram used to be, it was really a social platform that was about having those meaningful connections. And 
in that process, it was great for users because we could make those connections. But for Instagram as a business, it was horrible because they were not making money, right? In the early years of Instagram, they were struggling to make a profit and turn a profit for their business because it was a platform that was free for users. So they had to figure out a way for them to be able to actually make Instagram profitable. And one of the biggest contributing factors to being able to do that was by integrating ads, right? And so in the first kind of evolution of Instagram, we started to see, you know, sponsor posts or ads, maybe like every four or five posts, you would scroll and then you would see an ad, but you keep scrolling. And then over time, we've seen that advertising has become more and more prevalent. So why is it so hard to grow on Instagram today? It's because Instagram no longer requires you to follow people to show you ads. And the reverse of that is that it doesn't need you to grow a following for it to serve ads to other people. It doesn't need you anymore. Even though Instagram integrated ads and they started to see revenue coming into the business, they still had a huge problem with the fact that in order to make money, generate revenue from the ads that they were actually posting on the site, it meant that they had to have users continuously on the site to see those ads. And so then Instagram realized that there was a competitor problem, right? You still have all these other social media platforms. You have TikTok that was rising and coming after the um, 2020 boom, right? You had Snapchat that was out there. You had YouTube and long form content. And so Instagram was like, if we're going to retain the attention from those users, then why not, why not just mimic what those other platforms are? And then we entered this phase where it was like, Instagram was trying to be everything, right? In order to retain as many users as possible on the platform so that they can see those ads. Then it was like Instagram tried to be the end all be all of all social media platforms. And then that's when we saw the rise of Instagram stories. And then that's when we saw Instagram reels. And then threads came along, right? We saw long form TV, IGTV, um, and all of that come along. And I remember like when these things were getting introduced real time. And then we had guys too. No one ever talks about guys. Y'all, I did a whole video about Instagram guys because I literally thought guys were going to be the next big thing. But low key, it was just um, <laughs> Pinterest for Instagram. And, and I say that laughing and joking because literally I remember when all these new Instagram features would roll out. This is how I would think of them right when instagram stories first was introduced i was like okay this is snapchat for instagram when reels were first introduced i was like okay this is tiktok for instagram when guys first came out i was like pinterest for instagram you know when when igtv came out I'm like youtube for instagram and so essentially what you saw was Instagram trying to retain the attention from these other platforms by mimicking and mirroring what they saw other people do. And to me, I think that was kind of the beginning of the downfall for Instagram as a social plat platform that we as users, even content creators or entrepreneurs, wanted to be on and engage on because the more that they introduce all these things it was like you you felt obligated to have to use all the new features in order to stay relevant and to order to stay seen on the platform so even if you were used to posting just a little square picture now all of a sudden if you want to stay relevant on instagram you got to also post uh, snapchats in your story right or snaps in your your stories and then um, if you wanted to be relevant, you had to do like Instagram lives or post IGTV videos, or you had to post reels. 
And if you weren't doing those things, then you were just kind of fading into the background on the platform and your content wasn't getting pushed as much. And because of that, people changed how they were using the platform. Then that created the problem that exists today when it comes to Instagram. And I call it being interest media versus socially driven. On Instagram, I just feel like it's such like a weird app because I feel like there's a lot of weird people on there. It's like, if you're on the app and you're following someone, why do you just watch them? I feel like it's very creepy. Most of the time, I feel like people are just staring at me or just like watching me. They will be following you, not commenting on your stuff, not engaging, not even liking. They will just follow you. Like, what's the point of following me at this point if you're just going to watch me there's no reason for me to have over 2,000 followers but getting 89 likes and i know that y'all seen it because the analytics whenever i go to it it shows the impression numbers so it is showing that y'all seeing it but y'all not interacting what's really going on you can't just like the photo you can't just like the reel you can't comment you just gonna see it and stroll it's cool it's all good this is something that I noticed a while back and one of the big reasons why I kind of stopped using Instagram because I got to the point to where I would go on Instagram and when I would scroll down my feed, I wouldn't even recognize half of the content on there because it was pages I didn't follow, pages I didn't want to see, no shade to the shade room. But listen, I don't need to see shade room posts on my timeline. I don't want to look at those comments. That's why I don't have Twitter because I feel like it just breathes negativity, right? And I don't want that type of energy in my environment. And so I noticed that there was this transition where social media, particularly Instagram, went from being this social platform that was about meaningful connections where I could, I could connect with family, friends, connections that I've made through traveling or just interests and things like that to where I was being pushed content by random strangers that I didn't even want to see. And so that's why I say that I noticed that Instagram has transitioned from being a social media platform to an interest media platform. And so what I mean by this is if you think about the content that you see on Instagram now, you see content based on your interests or not necessarily your interests, but what the algorithm thinks you're interested in. And so how this is kind of dictated is by what I call either active or passive engagement. So a lot of that is going to be driven by active engagement, which is if you physically like or comment, share a post, right? That's active engagement. But then on the flip side of that, you also have passive engagement. So even if you don't like or comment on a reel, but you watch it, that's passive engagement. Even if you don't like or comment on a picture or a carousel, but you slide through all of the, the carousels, the slides in that carousel, the algorithm is like, oh, she looked through these slides, so she must like this content. Oh, she watched this reel, so she must like this content. And so what the algorithm does is it tries to find related videos, similar videos to the content that you just consumed, to the picture that you just engaged with, and serves you more of that, whether or not that's really what you wanna see. So an example of this that I always share with my clients is, Think of it as if like you go on Instagram and the first thing you see when you open up your newsfeed is a picture and it's actually one of your friends playing with her cat. And so you see your friend playing with her cat. Maybe she's teaching the cat a new trick or something and you think it's cute and it's funny, hilarious. You give it a like and then you comment, LOL, so cute. And so what that signals to the algorithm is, oh, Ebony likes cat videos. So now it's going to go find a thousand other cat videos and queue those up to show them to you next. And the problem with that is 
I don't want to see those a thousand other cat videos, right? I just wanted to see this one cat video that my friend is playing with her cat and teaching her cat a trick because I know this person and I think this is cute and funny and it's relatable and meaningful for me because I have a connection with this person. Not the 1,000 other people that you're sending my way and I don't know these people or this cat grooming business. I don't care how they wash cats when they come in. Do, do, I guess cats also go, <laughs> I know people take like their dogs grooming. I guess they take cats too, whatever. But that's the problem with the algorithm is it's now based on interest. So even though your interest isn't necessarily to see more cat videos, your interest was to see more content from your friends. <laughs> the algorithm doesn't know how to distinguish between the two. And so that is the problem that exists with the algorithm today. So now that I've kind of gone all into that, I really want to just kind of piggyback off of everything that I already said and just explain that because Instagram has become so interest based, that's the reason why you have low engagement when it comes to your content. That's why your reach is limited because when you actually post something on Instagram, it's not being sent out to the people who you follow or who follow you who may actually be interested in the content that you're posting. A big portion of the audience that's now seeing your content is people who are random strangers who just happen to have the same interest in the content that you posted or may not actually have that interest, right? So that is why you are seeing a steady decline in interest because the people who your content necessarily comes in contact with doesn't necessarily mean that they're interested in that content. And if they don't have a relationship with you, they don't know who you are, then obviously they're going to be le least likely to actually engage with that content. And so that is why I say that Instagram is dead and engagement is dead on Instagram because Everything is based on interest instead of sociability like it used to be. And honestly, in my opinion, if Instagram went back to the old being about connections, meaningful relationships, and sociability, I would probably go back to Instagram on a personal level, like a personal account, right? And I've even, even outside of that, because I am a digital nomad, I travel a lot. I have a separate travel channel, Ebony Meets World, where I post like travel vlogs and stuff. I just got to the point to where I hired a video editor who like creates um, like YouTube shorts from my long form videos. And I was thinking about, I was like, man, it would be great to be able to post like this travel content on Instagram. But honestly, I don't even want to post it over there because it's like all of the engagement that you do get is like people, hey, you need a video editor. Hey, I saw you have a YouTube channel. I can do your SEO. And it's like all spam comments bots people asking you if you want to be featured and it's like it's all inauthentic and i am someone who i value authentic relationships i value meaningful relationships like i have a tattoo is it right here established in 2004 which is like a friendship tattoo that i have with two of my best friends where you know we have been rocking with each other since 2004 and so I am a, literally a no new friends type of person. I'm not the type, I'm an introvert and I'm the type of person, I don't like to be around a lot of people just to be a lot around a lot of people to look like I'm having fun, to look like I'm happy. You know, I literally prefer to have a small circle of people who like I've connected with, we've built strong bonds and relationships. And that's not to say that new people can't come along, but just because I meet somebody doesn't mean they're automatically in my circle. Like I value authentic, purposeful, meaningful relationships. And that's why I don't like when people message me on social media. Hey girl, let's connect. Let's do this. It's fake. You just looking for a benefit, right? And I, I don't like that. But if Instagram went back to the meaningful connections, how it started, I think I would go back to the platform and then I just think users would actually enjoy it more. But now that you have ads and 
Instagram is making so much money, I doubt that it will ever go back to the Instagram of, of yesteryear, right? The Instagram we used to know. But that's just kind of my four cents about the algorithm and why I think it is the way it is and why I think engagement has tanked for so many people. So aside from that, I really just want to get into my story of why I quit Instagram and what life has been like since I quit Instagram. So I used to be at one point, I would say from like 2017, 2018, 2019, as a personal user, I was always posting on Instagram when I was traveling, what I was doing, um, posting food pics, selfies, like I was doing all of that. But then also as a brand, I had a separate page for my business where I will also post, you know, like entrepreneur stuff and promote my products and services. And I would say definitely 2017, probably to um, 2019, early 2020, Instagram was probably my primary marketing strategy for my business. I marketed organically on social media. I ran a lot of Facebook and Instagram ads, and I also leveraged a lot of influencer marketing. And that was the primary way that I filled my coaching programs. Back then, I was still doing coaching. I'm not a coach anymore, so don't message me <laughs> asking me to coach you. But that is primarily how I filled all my coaching programs, how I got clients, and how I marketed my business. But after 2020, and once TikTok started to boom, I feel like TikTok was kind of the beginning of the end for Instagram because TikTok took off in the U.S., at a time right in the middle of the pandemic, people were at home, you know, and just like people started posting content, being regular, regular people dancing in their living rooms, in the car, in front of their house, in bonnets, in their pajamas. And it was just this raw factor about Insta about TikTok and then it being in a, you know, during the pandemic, the time and space that we were in at that time that it just was something different and like something that we were missing when it came to just authentic content. And at that time, if you think about where Instagram really was, Instagram had became this place where even me, I was already starting to get to a place where I would have like anxiety or just like be overwhelmed with creating content for Instagram because it almost came off to like everything had to be about having an aesthetic. Um, everything had to be like, you know, very curated and well thought out. And so there was so much energy and effort that went into creating content for Instagram. And then it's like, boom, here's TikTok where people were like dancing in their bonnets, right? And so I think me personally, that was a huge shift that as a society, the world, like we just needed to make. And I think also that's why that is what I kind of spark as the downfall of like um, the celebrities that are famous for being fam famous, like the Kardashians and stuff like that. You notice like since the evolution of TikTok, people have less and less interest in like the Kardashian brand, right? Or the brands that were built on selling a lifestyle or promoting a lifestyle to you. But that's just my personal four cents and my perspective of how I see it. But I started to really think about like, man, here I am having a double up on content. I'm already posting, you know, static images, carousels. I'm posting stories every day. Now there's reels. I have to post reels and think about creating video content for that. I'm already, well, I wasn't never really doing live streams, but I would repurpose my YouTube content for IGTV videos. And I'm like, I'm, I'm required to invest more and more time, resources, energy to produce for this platform but my efforts are producing less and less results. And with the way the Instagram algorithm is, 
You can't just decide that, oh, I'm not going to post for a week and think that you're still going to be able to keep leads coming in. Like Instagram is a platform that is based on continuous engagement, continuous posting, continuously creating content to keep yourself in the algorithm versus where like a platform like YouTube, I remember I had posted a video in March of 2020 and at the end of that year, it was the first video I ever posted on my channel. It was about like um, a bulletproof lunch and like my five phase lunch strategy. I posted that video in March of 2020. And then the end of that year, like what, eight, eight months later, that video just blew up and took off. And that video is still getting views till this day, right? And so you have a video that is four years old that the YouTube algorithm is still pushing out. And it's not like, wait a minute, this content is old, baby girl. If you want us to push your content, you got to bring us something new. And that is how Instagram is. Instagram is looking at your old content like, what is this? Uh, you better send me something new that I can, can think about pushing out to the people, right? And so that was kind of like, one of the big factors that in my decision of like stepping away from Instagram. And I remember when I first thought about doing this, I talked to my best besties about it. And everyone that I talked to was like, girl, you're crazy. Like, what if someone asks to see your Instagram or how are you going to get clients? And I was just like, well, like I'll figure it out. And so I remember I started by just taking a break and I can't remember if it was like 21 day or 30 days and I was like I'm just gonna take a break and go like 21 days without Instagram and then 20 days turned into two months two months turned into six months and then next thing I know it had been a year and then now it's literally been over two years it's been since March of 2022 since I have used Instagram for business now I have made a couple posts just like personal I think I did one for like Juneteenth and then I think I made a post when I um I broke my ankle back in 2021 I think I posted maybe when I graduated physical therapy I don't remember but I have not used Instagram for my business at all since March of 2022 and it has not had a negative impact on my business at all. But a part of that is because, number one, the audience that I serve. So I primarily work with talent agencies, HR departments, organizations, and then coaching practices. So typically, when I acquire new clients, I don't find them through social media. And I don't rely on social media to find them anyways. And then also... Um, I still obviously use YouTube, but with YouTube, I focus on serving a particular audience with YouTube content. Even the people who hire me as a business operations manager, oftentimes those who hire me for audits for their programs or operations audits and things like that, typically they find me through LinkedIn, through Upwork, and a couple other like freelancer sites that I have are through um, networking events and different conferences that I go through. So that is typically the majority of ways that I find clients. And in this time, I have never, ever, ever had a client or a potential client say, hey, like, do you have an Instagram? Can I see your Instagram account? How many followers do you have? When's the last time you posted, right? I've never had anyone ask me about social media um, in general, but what I have had people ask me, and I, I said I was going to do a separate video about this, but I have had prospects as well as, you know, clients that I did eventually end up bringing on, ask me if I had a website, even if they met me like at an event or through LinkedIn, I've had them ask me if I have a website. And then I've also had people ask me for, um, like specific I guess you would call them personality results. So I've had people ask me if I've taken Clifton Clifton Strengths or Strengths Finder, and then I've had people ask me if I had taken Kobe. And you would be surprised how many people ask for these things. So I said I'll probably do a separate video and talk about things you could do to wild wow clients um, that don't require social media at all. Yeah, I have people ask me about personality assessments 
and just if I have a website, I've never had anyone ask me about social media. Like I have told clients that, yeah, I have a YouTube channel or whatever. And they're just kind of like, oh yeah, that's cool. I have had clients. I've told them about it and they follow me and watch some of my videos. But essentially with my YouTube channel, I mostly focus on targeting people who are the solopreneurs who are um, just kind of building the foundation for their online service-based business. And so they're trying to figure those things out on their own. And so this is pretty much how I communicate with that audience through this YouTube channel and then just the content that I have on Pinterest in the blog on my website. And so that is how I reach those people. No Instagram requires. And I wanted to share that because I know there are so many people who are kind of in this love-hate relationship with Instagram where you hate producing content, it gives you anxiety, you get overwhelmed and stressed out trying to constantly cater to the algorithm, understand the changes. And so you kind of get burnt out and frustrated and you want to give up on Instagram, but you're also in this mindset where you feel like you have to do it. And I'm here to tell you that you don't. I know how you feel because that used to be me. I was in a space where I felt like even though I hated doing it every time, ugly crying, posting something that... You know, you don't have to do it. You can find other marketing channels that can work for your business. And this is why I stress this so much when it comes to growing your business, whether you're a content creator, whether you're an um, entrepreneur, online service provider, etc. Like you really have to understand your audience. And when you understand your audience, who they are, where they spend their time, their shopping behaviors, then you can decide what marketing channels, what social media platforms, um, even when it comes to paid advertisement, like which avenues are the best for your business, which ones are going to get the best bang for your buck as well as your efforts. Because if you hate posting on Instagram, you hate dealing with the algorithm, you hate having to even the thought of posting something and your engagement tanking, I guarantee there is most likely another marketing channel out there that is going to be better for you that can produce the results that you're looking for. And in most cases with a lot less effort and energy. So like even me, when it comes to YouTube, I love YouTube because I can literally post one video a week. You know, I'll also post content over on my community tab and it allows me to connect with my audience without having to do the most. And then there has been times, honestly, on this channel where I, I go months, not months, but I've gone like a month without posting. Like I typically will take the whole month of December off. There has been times when I pre-recorded content to post during that month. And there's been times where I didn't and I just took the whole month off and didn't post nothing at all. But my past videos that were already uploaded were there for people to engage and to watch. So there are other options, okay? So I say all of that to say, if you're still watching this video and you're thinking about quitting Instagram, I would say do what I did. Just start with taking a brief break. Do like a 14-day, 21-day, 30-day break. And then just think about what other marketing channels or social media platforms are more in alignment with how it is that you want to engage and connect with your audience. And maybe YouTube will be that place for you. Maybe it ain't YouTube. Maybe it's LinkedIn. Maybe you need to step offline, touch some grass, go to conferences, meet people in person like we used to do back in the day, right? Um, that's up for you to decide. So my challenge is for you to take a step back from the Instagram algorithm and focus on what other platforms or what other marketing channels may be beneficial for you, all right? Child, I feel like I said so much in this video, but I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what you think about Instagram down in the comments below this video. Have you noticed a decrease in your engagement when it comes to Instagram? Let me know what you think about um, how I feel Instagram has become more interest-based than based on sociability. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know 
know your opinion in the, in the chat, but make sure you keep it cute, okay? Other than that, I just want to say thanks so much for stopping by my internet home. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on those notifications so anytime I upload another video just like this, you will be the first one to get notified. Bye, y'all.